Hey guys, RC here. Welcome back. Football Manager 21. This is episode 11 with Club 5, and we are back with our season review and transfer special. Uh, this has long ago become my favorite episode, I think, uh, just because that's the one I like doing. Uh, but anyway, let's get into the season. All right, let's take a look at the new arrivals this year. Of course, our first full year with the club. These are guys coming in. We brought in Dennis Diallo, a defensive midfielder uh, from Borussia Mladenovic, uh, for three and a half million. Heinrich Mulling, fourteen million dollars, but we still got an A plus grade on him. I think that's astounding. Ertzi Aridia, six and a half million, only a B minus grade, twenty three goals. I think that was definite value. Carlos Ibarra on a free, we got a B. Uh, Tiber Gall is a 21-year-old winger. Uh, he went out on loan. We got a C grade on him. He was a free. Marius Dopper, nine and a half million. Uh, David Degrassi, 250,000. Not sure he's going to develop into anything. Jorn Vander Hayden, 900,000 uh, from Vitesse. Uh, again, a lot of these are young guys. Uh, Nahuel Alonso, 20-year-old winger on a free. Uh, Gregors Pollock came in on a loan uh, from Borussia Mladenovic. Musa Sene from Mets, 20-year-old goalkeeper. Khan Yuxel, nine and a quarter million. C-plus grade on him, 40 starts. Uh, how did he do? Well, let's see. 52 goals in 36 matches, eight clean sheets, and a 681 rating. Probably could have done a little bit better, but you know, he was definitely an upgrade. Jonathan Leclerc was a free, no grades, I guess. Uh, you know, not enough to judge him on. Uh, Mislav Jimenez, 1.8 million, and Bryce Durumbia, 13 and a quarter million. That was a lot to spend. Uh, I'm, I'm having a little buyer's remorse on that one. Outgoing players. Uh, Nathan Van Herweg, 11 and a quarter million. Rune, that was our first big selling when I took over. 13 million to Ascoli. How did he do last year? 49 allowed in 35 matches. I mean, not, not bad at all. Nicholas Martin, 60 million. He goes to Tottenham. Uh, he was our young striker, and I did not want to sell him, but that was one that was kind of forced. Strangely enough, only five starts, one goal, and two assists. I wonder, I'm, I might look at seeing about bringing him back on loan next season if they're not really happy with him. Uh, let's see, Kondraki, 12 and three quarter million to Genoa. Silvio Gallas, he went on a free. That was just a salary dump. Carlos Godoy, $6.75 million to Genoa. Uh, another uh, just veteran player that we were moving. Uh, Abdullah Guzel, $25 million to Tranmere. And Murphy Maboyo, $250,000 for the young midfielder. So you can see most of the guys we sold were in their 30s or close to. And I think we did good business. Uh, we were expected to qualify for the Euro Cup. We finished third and Champions League. And yet we only get a C plus grade. Maybe I don't want to be back at this club. <laughs> I don't know. 25 goals for Martinez, the top scorer here. Uh, and in the French Cup, reached the quarterfinals. We did that, 37% attendance. And we talked about that the last couple of episodes. What is it going to take to get this fan base to start coming out to the game? Uh, Eusebio Martinez, four goals, only a C grade. There's your moments to remember. Oh, by the way, that 8-0 win that we had uh, last episode, that was a club record win. Uh, we're still worldwide at four and a half stars. Uh, the sponsorship deals come in a little bit later, uh, but everything right now is slightly down. Um, and I think that's due to Euro or Champions League or whatever they had the year before uh, that we didn't have this year. So, yeah, we need to get back into this. <laughs> Champions League is going to help us out immensely this year. 
it, and I think when we looked at the standings last episode, I think they were in Euro 2 or Euro Cup the year before, and they were eliminated before I took over, But or we, we may have managed the last game in the Cup or something like that. But that's where a bulk of that money is coming from, and we need that. We need that badly. Uh, Pekka ran in the highest jersey sale. I borrow Mullen, Garcia, and Arudia, rounding out the 3,400 jerseys sold and 871,000 uh, merchandise sales. We lined up in the 424. Everybody played pretty well. Uh, Quinones and uh, you know Yuxel need you know keepers never get sevens, but there is uh, there's our main people. Uh, quite a few guys in the high 30s of starts for the season. Uh, club awards, Pecoran and fans player of the season, Eusebio Martinez, the young player of the season. Mark Marius Dopper, our center back, was the signing of the season. Arudia had the goal of the season. Martinez was our top goal scorer with 29. Pecoran did hit 20 league assists. Seven player of the matches for the midfielder. 7.4 average rating was the club high. And uh, Gabriel Garcia, 47 passes per 90 minutes uh, was the most passes. In competitions, Quinones was the most promising player in League Un. So definitely, you know, it's going to take a big deal to move him. Uh, Eusebio Martinez with four goals is a, uh, in one match, new record. Uh, also the most goals in a league match same same game 20 assist most assist by a player in a season and aziz marty most league goals by a player he did add a couple of goals this year bringing him to 177 uh, on his tally so for next season they want us continuing to work within the payroll budget uh, they want us to qualify for euro cup and reach the group stage of champions league which we've already done because we're in the Champions League, uh, and my contract expires. So the next thing they want is to start being the best of the rest, and I, I think we're already there. That is considered the outside of the top team, top team, singular, PSG. So we're right there with Lil already. Uh, if we can do it again next year, I think we'll meet that, or at least a top third finish. We'll probably be right there. and. Then they're going to require that by the end of the 64-65 season. Uh, Aziz Marty is leaving, of course. Gomez is leaving. And we need to get some of these other players up. All right, taking a look at injuries, because injuries did come and bite us this year. We had three months for some of these guys, but uh, the highest one for our starters was Jacques Nagano, three weeks. Gomez, four weeks. So you can kind of look through there, and that's the bottom of the list, so nothing else to look at. Squads off on their end-of-season break. The top goal scorer in Premier, the, oh, the Ukrainian. Why, why are we looking at that? Oh, it's because it's Giuseppe Corbetta. That's why. He finished third. Remember Corbetta was with us at uh, Levante? Yeah, that's what it was. I was wondering why he was showing up. Or why that that email showed up. I guess he's still on our short list, maybe. The only thing I can think. Some interesting news that just came across. <clears throat> so Khan Yuskel, our goalkeeper, 24-year-old German, he has been called up for the German national team. So he will make his international debut, and that'll be great. I don't know if he's going to get a start, but he might. Taking a look at their national team. So he is in there. Wisdom Oronu. Mm, he's 25. Carl Heinz Mole is 24. They're both really good. So Yuxel's in there. I mean, he 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 could challenge, but we'll see. I think it'll be nice if he gets if he gets uh, a match. Just to make, you know, just to make his cap, you know, his first cap. Just saw that Pekka Rannan was uh, called up for uh, his national team, uh, Serbia, and that'll be his 50th cap, assuming he plays. So he's got 59 under 21 caps, and he's on 49 caps uh, right now. He's 28 years old, so 
you know, he's been a fixture. I am sensing some anti-American bias here in France, which shouldn't be surprising. But these are the final four candidates for head coach of the year. Two of them barely got 50% wins. And one of them was under 50%. The Lil Coach isn't on there. I'm not on there. What the hell is that? Well, the only one I can vote for is him. Well, then I'm I'm gonna I'm just not gonna vote this year because that's crazy. Well, here is some good news. So uh, with I guess with us moving up to third, uh, we have moved up to fourth position in the national coefficients, overtaking Italy. And that means we'll get an extra Champions League spot for next season with four teams qualifying to group stage. Uh, it was two. And, and now we lose the league path qualifying round, which is fine. So actually, I guess we're going into the qualifying round. So we have to win that to get to the groups. We'll see what happens. That's disappointing. But uh, anyway, good news for us moving forward. Uh, we've signed two new players, but we're going to look at them uh, July 1st when we get the full intake uh, at that point. All right, we have reached July 1st. We have some transfer business to catch you up on. So we'll go through a couple of... Uh, first one, we sold off Mislav Jimenez to Oviedo uh, for $3.5 million. Uh, we get a C-plus grade on that. Uh, then we also have assigned six players. Let me get them all set up, and then we'll take a look at them. All right. First off, we uh, a couple of these, most of these guys are younger players for the future. Uh, let's take a look at them first. Andre Janisuic, uh cost us $575,000. Uh, only three-star potential, but he didn't cost us a lot, and he's got some really good upside. So. You know, this is a player that might still develop. Uh, I don't know if potential can ever change, but you know, if he gets anywhere close to that, we should be able to sell him on for a nice profit, if nothing else. Uh, then we signed, um, let's see, Alberto Capellini, an 18-year-old winger. Uh, we get a, he cost us nothing because he came to us on a free. Four-star potential, one and a half-star current ability. He's a right winger, and potential-wise. He would actually be our best winger moving forward. Now he was a five star when I signed him, so I don't know. I don't know why the difference is there. If you know, let me know in the comments. Uh, then we signed Rob Thomas. He was also a free three star current potential. Uh, he is a defensive midfielder, but he can also play center back. He's six feet tall, so right on the small side for that. But he can also move up to midfield. And this guy's got an 18 marking, and that's something we've really lacked in our midfield is a good defensive midfielder. So, you know, I could see putting him there, uh, especially is if he gets better down the road. Very, very good physicals. Mentals are through the roof on everything. I mean, he just looks really good. Tackling, marking. So I think he could slot in very easily at center back. Jumping reach is a little on the low side, I mean, but it's 12. I mean, it's still great. And if I ever do decide to go with a, a, a holding midfield type thing, uh, he would be the man. So Rob Thomas comes on board. Uh, Kim In Woo, an 18 year old wonder kid. Uh, he cost us five and a quarter million dollars. He's from South Korea and has one national cap to his name. Three star current, five star potential. Uh, he came up in the Guangui. Uh, system. I hope I pronounced that at least close to right. Uh, very good ball dribbler. He can cross decently. First touch is stellar. He can play either one of the wing spots. His finishing isn't horrible, so if we need to slot him in, uh, his determination, decision making, and composure is real good. So I think with those, that might offset his lower than average finishing. And he could be a factor in the striker if we need him, but that's not what I'm looking at him for. And he can also play number 10 and out wide on the attacking right wing uh, because he is right footed. Uh, on the left side, he would be inverted. So I think we're going to train him up on the right side for now but he looks to be a good piece of business. 
Uh, let's see. We already looked at him. Andres Linko, an 18-year-old goalkeeper, cost us $3.9 million. I know I just spent $11 million, and again, I mentioned buyer's remorse on that. This guy looks pretty good. Only 18 years old, four-and-a-half star potential. So uh, definitely want to be looking at him. Uh, he becomes the best potential keeper in our group. And we'll try to get him a loan out uh, so he can start to develop. And the last guy we signed last year, uh, Zisco Gordon, uh, he came, he's coming on a free 24-year-old Spaniard with three-and-a-half star potential, at number 10, and a midfielder. Again, pretty good all around. Uh, a lot of flair, great decision-making. He can pass. He can take penalties. Uh, free kick taking, which we need, especially if we're going to move Pekaranen at some point uh, here in the future. Uh, we do need somebody to take his slot. So that is our six guys coming in. And I bumped this to 4.6. So you know what? We're going to accept that. So we're going to try to move on Mario Aguiar. Uh, let me double check. I got two offers. They're both at 4.6. So we'll take that. And Yuxel, I've had a couple of teams come in, but he's valued at 11, and I'm only getting offers at 13 to 14, and he wants to talk to Red Bull. Speaking of Red Bull Salzburg, so at the end of the year when they recalculate all the team standings and league standings, uh, Red Bull Salzburg is the number one team in the world, and uh, their coach left. And he came and took the Sasho job in France, in Ligue 1, and they reached out to interview me, and I told them no. I just didn't want to drop all the way down to the Austrian. Uh, I think they're 11th overall, so they're, they're kind of a one-team league. Um, but I, I just didn't want to do that, so I, I de declined to interview with them. But um, anyway... That's where he wants to go, and if they want him and they want to pay, I think I put a price on him of sixty million. If you come in at sixty million, I'll think about it. Uh, Aguiar, we're going to let him go, uh, and we are going to reject those outright. All right, so we are at July first. Taking a look at the schedule, we open with Red Star and Havre. And so we'll come back for uh, the Havre match and Red Star highlights. Uh, once I get to them, I've got to get through all the friendlies. You notice we threw PSG in there. We're trying to catch them. We need money. We were able to do an away game and get $1.1 million. So that'll help us. And if we take a look at finances, we've gotten our money in for TV. Uh, and so we're sitting on $56 million. So not quite as high as last year where we were at 87, but we're still looking pretty good. Uh, we do have uh, about $1.8 million in the wage bill and $6.2 million in the transfer budget. And actually, I wanted to... They're not going to let me do it again. No. All right. Uh, we're currently at 85%. We were at 70, so I'd asked them they had raised it. Uh, because I, you know, I was like, we're in the red, we're in the black here, so let's go ahead and uh, make a shot at it. Um, but it hadn't come back to let me do it yet. I did ask him to do a uh, a networking. I'm going to ask him again because we've lost an affiliate. Uh, we haven't signed anybody. I'm not looking at it really for the players. I'm looking more for spreading the name of the club and getting some interaction with other areas to maybe start drawing more merchandising, more revenue, things of that nature. So anyway, let me get these friendlies done and uh, you guys just hang tight for a second and we'll be back with highlights. All right. I know the episode is running long. That's typical in a transfer. So Let's jump into it. Just to remind everybody on what the expectations are, we are supposed to qualify for the Champions League uh, this year. That is out of the group stage, I think. Uh, be competitive in the Champions League this year. Oh, I'm sorry, they did raise that. They raised that from Euro Cup to Champions League. That was after I'd already agreed to it, and then they came back and said, oh, by the way, uh, and they want us to reach the quarterfinal. Uh, taking a look at the competition, Season preview, 
we are picked to finish ninth in the table. So they don't have uh, much faith in us finishing in that top four to get into one of the automatic Champions League qualifying. Taking a look at the top players, ours are Dragan Pekaranen and Kim In Wu. So one of our new players is uh, in the mix there. I don't know that he's going to be playing a lot. Maybe I need to rethink that. <laughs> Maybe I need to rethink that. Uh, I'll let you take a look at the uh, friendly list here. Uh, we actually won all of our, well, we didn't lose any matches. We drew two, and we actually beat PSG 4-3, to three, a hat trick for Eusebio Martinez. Arudia scored as well, and we had a 4-1 lead at, uh, in this match, and they scored in the 63rd minute and then a stoppage time goal to make it close. But we And they dominated the game, in all fairness. They dominated the game. It was, you know, 26 shots to nine, something like that. It was, you know, but we made it count. We made it count. We did have a, uh, I thought it was a penalty, but it wasn't. What, there was a penalty in one of these. There it was. I knew Martinez had a, had a penalty somewhere uh, against Alavez. Uh, we do have some transfers to catch you up on, so let's take a look at those. Uh, we have gotten some recent bids on Khan Yuskel. We've rejected those. Uh, from Verona. Uh, Liverpool has made an offer that we rejected for Pekaranen. They only offered 43, and that's his value. So I was like, yeah, Liverpool, you got the Premier League tax, man. I, I want 90 million for this guy. Uh, Tabor Gall, we turned down. Uh, they withdrew. They had a good offer that I was going to accept, and I raised, they had a futures clause to buy him for like 3.3, and he's valued at 4.3, so I raised it to 3.7, so only 300,000 on a future option that they don't have to put into place, and they withdrew their bid. I was like, okay, uh, that is all. That's all the new. That's all the business that was recent. But taking a look at what has happened uh, since. Uh, the beginning of July. So uh, Mislav Jimenez, I think you knew we sent him out for three and a half. Mario Aguiar, our, uh, one of our keepers. We, we had so many because we signed some, so we sold him to Cagliari for 4.6. Uh, he came to us uh, on a free, so that's that's a good turn of business. That gets almost half of our money for the $11 million we put out last season on that other keeper. Uh, we sold uh, Abdul Aziz to Gink for up to 5.5 with installments. Uh, he's 20 years old, but you can see he just wasn't great. Three-star max potential. Although I did get the uh, the dirty email that said, the fans are worried that you let a promising youngster go. I'm like, yeah, whatever. Uh, and then a bunch of guys out on loan, uh, a bunch of young guys and some of the newer players that we've signed. Uh, so you already saw Zisco Gordon. Uh, that was the signing from last season. Uh, during the season, uh, Rob Thomas, we looked at him, and Alberto Cepellini, uh, all freeze. Lesko, Linko is our new deputy keeper, and Kim Inwu and Janicek, you all saw that. So these are the new guys. One expecting to do some of this business. We signed Ishmael Oigan from Borussia Dortmund for $8.5 million. He is a 24-year-old Turkish striker with eight international caps, two-and-a-half star current, three-and-a-half star potential. Again, I don't know what's causing it, but he was five-star potential when I scouted him, and when I signed him, he changed. If you guys have any idea why that happens, let me know in the comments. Uh, but he cost us seven and a quarter million. Borussia Dortmund had bought him from Chimnitz for 17 million, so we get him at a cut-rate bargain. I'm pretty excited about this kid. Uh, now, he has yet to score fours in friendlies, but he is playing well. He has got so many mental attributes. They're all through the roof. He's six foot four, 17 jumping reach. Not the, you know, only 11 in heading, but he's he can pass. He can first touch, finishing. He's got pace and acceleration. This kid looks really good. Uh, then we brought in uh, Gael Moreau from AS Monaco for five and a half. He's a futures player. We're trying to loan him out four and a half star potential, and he's already pretty solid, but we just need to get him some game time to develop. 
Uh, then I brought in Ilton from VDG, and I don't know who that is. He is a Brazilian. We had room for uh, for one player in the uh, in the foreign category. He is a striker, two and a half star, maxed out already, but he's twenty three. Uh, good decision, decent composure, finishing first touch. I just think this gives us another solid player, even though the star rating isn't there. The 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 number ratings are, and that's that's you know where you kind of have to go with uh, when you're trusting your gut. Uh, then we brought in uh, Jaime from Mallorca. He can play center back and right back. He's six foot one, more of a right back, and we needed depth really bad. I kind of noticed it late in the window. I overlooked it, and I wasn't getting any fullbacks coming in through the scouting. So uh, went out and found this guy. Uh, you know, he didn't cost us a lot. He's an emergency backup, 60000 I think he can do business, and uh, even though he's not going to be great, he's depth. He's, you know, he's an emergency backup and only cost us 220000 Then, along those lines, I brought in uh, Christian Valinicic, uh from Hagic on loan. Two-star current, two-and-a-half-star potential. Again, similar, but he can play both left and right back. Uh, he is right-footed, but good crossing, marking, passing, tackling. He's got the pace acceleration. I think he's just got the attributes to do do the job as coming off the bench or in case of injury, which is what we brought him in for. And then we brought in uh, another center back on loan from Middlesbrough in Gildas Cherry, 21-year-old English player. Uh, he is six foot two, uh, very good defensively. Uh, jumping reach is excellent, so I can see him being a factor on those corners. And I just, again, star rating's not there, but everything else is. So, I, you know, let me know your thoughts on that. If you, ha if you have good ratings, but you don't have the stars, how do you usually interpret that? Let me know. I'd be interested to hear from you. All right, well, let's get uh, to Red Star for our season kickoff. I need to advance one day. I'll be right back. A little bit of good news on something we had been talking about. Uh, 3,213 season tickets this year. That's up uh, about 650, 640. So that's, I guess, a good chunk. But, man, we, we need to be pushing 20,000 in this stadium. And we're not even going to sell 10,000 tickets uh, to the season opener, it looks like. Uh, they said they, you know, did not expect to sell out about 7,000 tickets. Oh, that reminds me, we uh, we lost one of our two affiliates. Uh, they got a, they had a board takeover, and then they canceled their agreement with us, and I was okay with that. We went out, and I was looking for something not for players, but for marketing opportunities. So uh, being an American and, you know, being an American in the game, uh, went with New England. Uh, I had two MLS clubs and two uh, Chinese Super League clubs and uh, maybe should have taken the Chinese club. But, uh, you know, I went America first. We may try to pick up a Chinese affiliate down the road. But, you know, this is mainly to uh, generate merchandising opportunities. So we'll see if that works. I have no idea if it does. I don't usually show you guys the staff, but there's the look. We we basically have the best staff in the league outside of distribution. I did sign quite a few new coaches uh, this year. Uh, Gary Evans is my new assistant coach. I have two. I don't know why. Is that something that's been in FM21 all along, two assistant coaches? Never realized that. But he is a huge upgrade uh, from my previous and he wanted like $76,000 to re-sign. And I had heard, I think it was Loki Doki one time say, it's it's just better to let your coaches go and then sign new ones because you can get them cheaper than if you try to re-sign to a new contract. I also have Zakaria Elsa. Uh, I don't know why I have two assistant coaches. He's not one that I would pick, um, but he's there. And we signed a couple of new fitness coaches as well. Dennis Lucas was our big one, uh, 18 in fitness. He goes along with Manuel Jackal at 17. So we've really upped our fitness levels. So hopefully we'll see that coming into the development of players as well. And so I'm going with Gary Evans with uh, 17 ability, 15 potential. 
So if we look at our team report, kind of acclimate you to the new players. Uh, and this is the tactic I'm thinking about playing this year. I'm thinking about dropping back, trying to be a little more uh, central and strong in the midfield. And all these guys can play the same position. So it's Yuxling, Gold, Derumbia, and then the new guy, Linko, back there. Fran's back on loan. Dopper's a center back, but he can slide over. We have uh, Val Valinich Valinchich and uh, Gal that can uh, fill in out there as well. Quinonez is going to be on the right side. Uh, Diallo is going to make the senior squad this year as depth. Valinit Valinchic is there as well, as well as Jaime, who's uh, another new player that we signed. We have uh, Quinonez because he's outside now. That leaves us Dopper, the new guy Rob Thomas coming in. Very strong defensively, a lot of pace. I think he'll be our everyday starter. Uh, Pollock will be coming off the bench. He was our starter last year. He's a great ball-playing defender. And then uh, the loney Gildas Cherry will be on the bench there. Uh, up top, Martinez returns. Uh, we have uh, Oigen, Arudia, and Inwu, and Aiton uh, up top. I really want to rename him Hilton. But uh, that, that's our striker, uh, striker force. Uh, Nagano, Mulling on the outside left. Inwu can go out there. Pekka Rannan, uh, and it's going to be mulling out there in all likelihood. Well, I don't know. We could go with, honestly, I'm probably going to go mulling left with Nagano off the bench, Pekka Rannan and Garcia in the mid. Rob Thomas can fit in there. Ibarra can slide inside, but Ibarra is going to be our guy on the outside. Now, he's not listed here, but Inwu can play, it can play attacking wing. And he's already picked up a little bit of ability at that mid mid wing, so he's going to be more depth out there on the right side. So that's kind of what we're looking at. This is all the way down to one star, unfortunately. Uh, if we go three star, pretty shallow in a lot of places, but there, you know we're at least too deep everywhere except for the right side. Uh, but again, Inwu can move over there. He's three star. Just needs to learn the spot. So we're going to go with Yuskel in goal. The back four looks pretty familiar. Fran, Dopper, Pollock, and Quinonez. Mulling and Ibarra on the wings. Pekaranen and Garcia in the central mid. We're going to give Oigan his debut alongside Martinez. And let's go see what these guys can do. Apologies again that the episode went long. Hopefully I can edit it down, uh, you know, a good bit. Uh, typically during that... Uh, that mid-season in the transfers, I do, um, you know, I do let the video run while I'm advancing days, at least for a little while. But uh, anyway, let's get to it. The season is underway. We will encourage them, and we start off with Pekarana near post. It's headed out. Mulling controls it. So I've got a lot of high hopes this year. Mulling. Oh, good, good cross in rather than leaving it on the, uh, oh, there it is. Martinez with our first goal of the season. Marius Dopper, the center back with the cross into the box. And that looked really, really good. Liking the way that played out. So, you know, I think we brought in some good players. I, I am going to be interested to see your responses as far as, um, Looking at rate the, the rating numbers compared to the star numbers, uh, I'm going to encourage them again. Six shots, three on target. They haven't really created anything. One shot off target. But I am hopeful for this season. I know the, uh, the predictions have us you know, pretty far down, ninth in the table. But, um, you know, I think we have, uh, we've got the talent here. We showed it last year. And I think we've added to that talent base. There's still some holes, and it's going to be interesting when Champions League kicks in uh, how we manage through that. That's going to be interesting to look at. Played well. Let's get to it. Encourage them some more. We do have somebody. Who's that? Fran's playing a 6-3. Oh, that one goes wide of the mark. I'm going to, uh, no, I can't do anything just yet. 
We've got one yellow card. Brand's not playing great. I tell you what, let's see. Let's see if we can sub him off. I can bring Dopper out there, or I can bring Valenichich in there. Tell you what, let's bring Dopper on for Fran, or Thomas on, and we'll move Thomas inside, Dopper to the outside. He can play left back out there. And you know what? Let's go ahead and move Ibarra, and let's bring uh, Kim In Woo on for his debut. Now, if I remember correctly, he is right footed, so he can be a true winger out there. All right, so we'll have another debut coming on the field here in Inwu, and he's supposed to be one of our better players. And it could be that Ibarra goes to the bench if Inwu can, you know, show the ability. It's Martinez headed back across the keeper, and he's got a brace in our opener. What a header by Martinez, and I am really glad we brought him back. <laughs> All right. Let's uh, let's praise. They're doing a lot of ball control here. I was hoping dropping into that midfield four would... Uh, and they beat Thomas. That was Thomas that got beat. Uh, the, new, the new guy. Oh, he's on a debut too. I, I forgot about that. Let's keep an eye on that. Yeah. He got, he got his back turned and he spun around and just got beaten by L... L um, Ronnie. Hello, Ronnie. That was not great. It's Pekaranen. There's the header. It goes wide. I just realized because I had brought, put in a new tactic for this season, this one, uh, I forgot to change my set pieces, so I just went in and did that, but I'm going to have to change it uh, here in a little while. Pollock, that was horrible. He bounced it off of two defenders. Of course, not many people can do that. In Wu with a nice ball into Martinez. He's to the touchline. It bounces off, and Oigen gets a debut goal off the keeper deflection. A little lucky break, but sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. Keep an eye on him. He's in space. He's finding a channel. Martinez does a great job, and it bounces off of Marcello. Nicholas, it, I don't think he was ready for that deflection. And then it went right to Oigen, who put it in the back of the net. And that should seal the deal for us, I would hope, at 3-1. to one. But you never say never. Squared in, there's Garcia. And boy, he likes to put the laces through the ball, doesn't he? We saw that last year. And oh, that was a thing of beauty from just outside the edge of the box. And he just laced that one. All right, we've got a set piece for them. Can we defend it? Looks like it went over the goal. Oh, the fans are leaving early. We just got that notification. All right, so we've got a three-goal advantage. You know what? I'm going to rest Quinonez. Let's bring Diallo on. I want to try to get him a lot of game time this year just to help with his development. and. You know, maybe I should have waited and gone with somebody else there. Four minutes of stoppage time. There we go. And it's a solid four to one victory. 2.63 on the XG. Uh, you notice the shots are down in this tactic compared to the other one. I did see that throughout the preseason, but hopefully we are more efficient and maybe concede a few less goals. Uh, let's go ahead and pump them up and get that morale heading in the right direction for this season. Uh, and uh, PSG eight nil. Uh, Angers is one of the new or Angers is one of the new clubs coming up from League Two. Uh, so that's interesting. We were four one. Rhymes, uh, I think FC Lorient is a new club as well. Five three. Shadowrow lost. Wow. And Lil 5 0 over Nimes. Wow. Big scores on the opening day. Let me know in the comments what you think about the new signings. Uh, and uh, I, they haven't told us Champions League starts September 13th. So that's next month. 
Uh, so we'll come back for that. We'll come back whenever after we draw Champions League. We'll probably jump into that, and that'll give me a run of games sometime into September, four or five games, and we'll see how we're doing. We'll come back for Champions League. Guys, hit the like button, subscribe for daily Football Manager content. See you next time. Bye.